Section of ordinance next in line, repealing and replacing chapter four, smoking regulations of division B6 of the city of San Ramon M municipal code. The staff report will be by city attorney Martin License. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. Um, oh, there we go. I'm going to uh, get this set up here and then I'm going to retreat to my usual roost. Uh, far, far left. Far left. Aha, thank you. Thank you. Uh, on February 26 of 2013, this council revised and updated the smoking ordinance uh, to address the hazards of exposure to secondhand smoke and to revise uh, the ordinance to prohibit smoking in all locations but to list specific exemptions where smoking is allowed. Uh, it also prohibited smoking within all city parks and required the publication of an informational handout regarding the new regulations. Uh, since then, there have been some developments and trends that have uh, appeared in, in, the, in the smoking world, I suppose. Uh, first, Prop 64 was passed in 2016, legalizing the use of recreational marijuana in California. Uh, second, the use of vaping or e-cigarettes or electronic smoking devices has boomed in recent years. And third, flavored tobacco products have gained in popularity, particularly among young people. Uh, so the key provisions of this ordinance uh, are, are designed to address these latest trends. We're presenting this ordinance for your consideration. It's a revision of the current smoking ordinance, and these are the, the key points. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, electronic smoking devices have become very popular in recent years. Uh, one source reports that adults who reported having used e-cigarettes in a 30-day period has doubled from 1.8% in 2012 to 3.5% in 2013. Do you have any statistics on 2017 or 2016? I mean, that's already five years old. I've got to believe the numbers are five times that probably. Yeah, um, I c there are some further s statistics that I could probably that I could. Uh, um, it's curiosity more than anything else. Yeah. <coughs> statistics um, that are five years older are interesting, but but an anecdotally, um, from what I've heard from from various sources, that trend has continued and, and in fact increased. Um, there was a there was a one, uh, and again there there were you know from eight to 29 year olds e-cigarette use tripled in, in a single year uh, and nearly 20% of young adult e-cigarette users in California have never smoked traditional cigarettes. So uh, how do we address the, the, these issues? Um, in general, the idea is to limit the places in the city where it is legal to vape or to smoke. Uh, and so the way we do that is to expand the definitions of smoking to include vaping and marijuana smoke and essentially any other kind of smoke. Um, so the new definition of smoke, as you can see in the red, includes vapors uh, and includes, uh, but is not limited to tobacco smoke, electronic smoking device vapors, marijuana smoke, and smoke from any illegal substance. <laughs> Such as? Illegal substances uh, that can be smoked, well, cocaine, heroin, any, any number of if you want to like PCP, I don't know. Uh, if, so in addition to the criminal prosecution that comes with the use of those, of, of those illegal substances, they can also be cited uh, under the smoking ordinance. Uh, we have done the same with the definitions of smoking and, um, there we are. And smoke delivery system is an, is an added term um, that um, includes any smoking or vaping device and any type of smoke, whether tobacco, marijuana, or, uh, or 
any plant or plant product or derivative. Um, so from here, the ordinance now applies in the same way to vapors and for marijuana smoke as it does uh, to tobacco smoking currently. Um, and those prohibitions ha essentially have not changed. Um, it, again, Probably want to expand this to smoking beef jerky too, then, since it's <laughs> meat product there, Martin. I, I'm afraid this room would fill up completely if we were to try to do something like that. <clears throat> Finally, the uh, ordinance, uh, the proposal addresses uh, the problem of flavored tobacco products. According to studies, uh, these were submitted by the Contra Costa Health Services. Flavored tobacco have a significant impact on young people who may be exposing themselves to tobacco and tobacco use for the first time. Um, and some of the studies cited say that 80% of youth are introduced to tobacco using some kind of flavored tobacco product. This was from a study by the Journal of American Medical, the Journal of the American Medical Association. Um, the second being that youth who smoke menthol cigarettes are significantly more likely to show signs of nicotine addiction than their peers who smoke non-menthol brands. Uh, this from a publication entitled Nicotine and Tobacco Research. And then third, youth who vape are four times more likely to smoke cigarettes one year later than youth who don't vape. Again, from the Journal of the American Medical Association. So there is, uh, there have been some studies out there that link the use of flavored uh, products, to, uh, nicotine delivery products, um, to smoking in later life. To address that, uh, the proposed section B680.C uh, uh, goes after the sale of flavored tobacco products and menthol cigarettes. Uh, the ordinance as currently proposed drafts uh, creates a 500-foot buffer zone around schools, playgrounds, and other sensitive receptors. This is modeled after the county's ordinance, but the county utilizes a 1,000-foot buffer. And I'll, in just a moment, we'll look at the two maps um, <coughs> to, so, that, so that the council can, can see what that covers. Um, it seems that the 1,000-foot buffer option covered a very large portion of the city and, and uh, and really restricted it uh, almost to the point where it, there weren't any places available for that type of business. Um, in fact, let's take a look at the first map being the uh, 500 foot radius. And unfortunately, it's a little difficult to see, but the, but the, the pink cloud around uh, the various sensitive receptors show that there are under the 500 foot scenario some limited places where um, where the, um, these flavored tobacco products can be sold, um, and including one that's existing now on Crow Canyon Road um, near the freeway. Under the 1,000-foot radius scenario, uh, by contrast, there are only three commercial properties outside of the 1,000-foot radius from sensitive receptors. Uh, the one would be a Chevron parcel on El Costa. The other would be the parking lot for the San Ramon Marriott on Bishop Drive. And the third would be the, that strip mall um, on which the, the existing vape shop is, it resides. Um, I'm not sure if that vape shop itself falls within the 1,000 foot radius, but it is very close. And um, if, it, if the council were to select the 1,000 foot uh, radius option, the, then uh, they could consider grandfathering in the existing business or, or some sort of phase out on, on that one. Um, now we have received some correspondence from the public, uh, notably a letter from the American Petroleum and Convenience uh, Association. Uh, they're essentially, they are ob object to what they're considering to be a lack of notice because the title didn't include the ban on, on uh, flavored pro um, products. Uh, 
that may be something that we can address as we as we go forward with the, with our options. Uh, there were other folks, a gentleman by the name of Corey Paget, who has um, has essentially chronicled his uh, uh, his quitting smoking via the flavored tobacco, um, or excuse me, flavored flavored products, and. Um, and a letter from the California Independent Oil Marketers Association, um, who again cite a, a, a lack of transparency, and they are also uh, um, there's also a request to uh, to at, at least allow, at a minimum, if if these are if these sales are to be phased out, to allow for um, existing shops to sell their their current stock. So the council does have some options in uh, that, that pertain to the flavored nicotine products. Uh, we could move forward with the 500 foot sales ban as proposed uh, in, in the current ordinance. Um, they could increase it to a thousand foot and severely limit the number of places where these sales could take place. Um, and they could increase the the ban to be citywide. Now, uh, there's only a citywide ban in two places currently, uh, one in Richmond, which was passed only a week ago, and one in San Francisco, which was passed only about a month ago. Uh, we really have no way of knowing what the outcomes of any challenges have been to these particular ordinances. Uh, these are a significant step forward from from just doing a radius from sensitive receptors. And the ban was just on, oh, the flavored? The flavored, yes. Just the flavored. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, a, a, a further options would be to take either of those three above choices, but then to grandfather in existing uh, retailers or to grandfather them in for a limited period of time uh, or to do some combination of both, or, or to allow them to sell out their existing stock. Um, neither of those provisions are currently in, but the, that can be easily be remedied by, <coughs> by putting um, those provisions I into the ordinance. Uh, and then finally, the other option would be to eliminate the flavored uh, tobacco products provision altogether and allow those sales to continue. Given the fact that we have had some objection to the noticing, I would recommend that we come back and that we and that we specifically notice, if uh, given direction from the council, that we could uh, then we could then put that back. I don't believe that the noticing provisions are a significant threat to the viability of this particular ordinance, but it's um, it's best to to address these these. Uh, immediately I would also if the if the council proposes to make the ban um, any more stringent than than proposed uh, I would also want to bring that back for uh, for more pointed findings to be made uh, to that effect so the next steps then would be the the essentially the, your four options continue with this item uh, and give staff direction to notice a hearing at a future date and with the notice specifically to include the regulation or the ban of flavored tobacco sales, <coughs> uh, or to refer this item to the policy committee with direction to come up with a recommendation on flavored tobacco. Um, this is all assuming that the other two provisions of the ordinance are, are not controversial according. Uh, um, then or the other one would be to direct staff to bring the ordinance back with no ban on flavored tobacco products and bring the proposed ban as a separate item. This would uh, this would bring the other the other provisions um, to the forefront and, and get them enacted be, uh, um, more quickly, and then and then we could spend a lot more time on on the proposed ban, and then lastly the option would be to set August 9th for adoption as August 9th is a Thursday. Is it a Thursday? Yeah, we're not having a meeting the first week. Is that a typo? Yeah. Okay. My apologies. It'd be August 28th. 14th or 20th. 14th. Well, 14th, 14th is canceled. 20th, August 28th. 28th. Thank you. August 28th. 
and, and I will uh, take any questions if you have them. Can't, can't have a Thursday meeting, huh? I guess I'd have one. We're talking about flavored tobacco, vaping. We're not talking about cigarettes. Oh, it would include menthol cigarettes. It would include menthol cigarettes, okay, yes. this includes menthol cigarettes. Um, Scott, let's see. Uh, I had the opportunity to hear a very comprehensive presentation by the Contra Costa County Health uh, Services staff. And um, uh, our attorney, Mr. License, uh, presented some of the materials. The materials presented at that Contra Costa, by the Contra Costa County Health uh, was, was very compelling about the problems associated with youth and um, uh, how youth acquire um, their products and the attractiveness of 15,000 different flavors and the nicotine addiction associated with persons under 21 and how it affects them and their health going forward and so to me the sales part of this is an integral part and I would like to um, I would like to go forward with the thousand foot radius I am aware of the business aspects and would be open to um, grandfathering for a limited period to allow them to sell out their existing inventories but um, beyond that, I, I have no sympathy for a product that essentially deals in death and addiction. Okay. Martin, in terms of clarifying, this has to come back with a new title to include flavored. Are you looking just for some general direction, but not set in the ordinance tonight? Yes. Um, if if the council has some direction on, well, firstly on, on, on the first two items that were covered and then, and then okay. uh, more importantly on but the, on the so band. So here's, here's my thought for the rest of the council. Before we start talking about what we might want to do, can we listen to the public yeah. and then go sure. back to talking about what our thoughts are? Sure. Is that okay? Sure. Okay, great. Let's have a public hearing. <laughs> Okay, just for clarity, if I can. Sure, Dave. What you're saying is hold the public hearing, don't introduce the ordinance. Right we're not now. going to have it. Or we're not. Okay, because it was set up as entered up, but I, just for clarification so people are hearing it, we're not introducing the ordinance, but we have people that want to speak, speak to a public hearing, so we'll open the public hearing. The council may introduce the ordinance. That, that doesn't affect its options later. The, and then after once... I've received direction from the council. Um, then we can reintroduce a, an, another ordinance under a different title at a later date. Great. Okay. So what do you want to introduce the ordinance? Okay. I'll introduce the ordinance uh, next in line, repealing and replacing Chapter 4 Smoking Regulations of Division B6 of the City of San Ramon Municipal Code. Is second. there a second? Well, then we're not, we need to have it. We want to have public input, well, and that's all we're doing. Is just public input. I think it sounds like Find we're going to flood a table, and we will open the public meeting. Right. How many secret cards do we have, Madam Clerk? Seven. Seven. Great. <laughs> we would like when you come forward to uh, keep your comments to three minutes or less. I believe there'll be a timer up. Yes. Yes, there'll be a timer up, and. Uh, I'll give you a gentle reminder if you begin to exceed the three minutes. Madam Clerk, go ahead. Open the public meeting. Grace Borgonia. <coughs> Hello, Grace. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and City Council Member. I just want to introduce myself. My name is Grace Borgonia. I am an owner um, of Nexus Vapor in San Ramon. We are the first electronic cigarette store in San Ramon. I am also uh, a resident of San Ramon for over 15 years, so I love the city. So um, I just want to read something that I receive in the mail um, June of 2018 this year. It's actually from the California Department of Public Health. 
attention business owner, Nexus Paper. In the past 90 days, officers from the California of Public Health, Food and Drug Branch conducted a tobacco compliance inspection at various retail establishments in your city. A decoy under the age of 21 was sent into your establishment in an attempt to purchase a tobacco product. Your establishment successfully prevented this activity by not selling the tobacco product to the decoy. Thank you for your efforts in the prevention of the youth, uh, prevention of youth access to tobacco products. I want you to all to know that every single day there is somebody that comes in under the age of say 21 that tries to buy tobacco products. I, I As a business that owner, I, that's money out the door. Excuse but, me, uh, yeah. could yeah. you tip that microphone oh. down a little bit? It's a lot. Sorry, Thank timer. you. So as a business owner, that's just money out the door. But as a parent, you're, um, unless you're 21, you're not coming in. You're not going to buy anything. Um, like I said, fl flavored product, flavored nicotine. It's not. Of course, the media is going to say it is um, targeting minors. Um, we do have um, adults, even in the age of 60, 65, that come in. They yep. want to quit cigarettes, combustible cigarettes, and that's the only way. Why take away something that they can, that c they can enjoy right now, like as in flavor? Why give them tobacco flavoring or, nic or menthol? They want to get away from that. <coughs> I do have um, adults coming in just vaping zero because of the hand and mouth, because of the stress, you know, everyday stress. Um, they just need to get away from that. Um, that's all I have to say. Can I ask a question? Sure. Because you said this, and this always drives me crazy. The age limit is 21, not 18. 21. It was, it was 18 until two years ago. Okay. Just for clarification. Thank you. Great. I'd like to ask a Thank question you. of sure. the business owner, Mr. Mayor, if I, if I may, if you know this. Let's say it, 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 if you would have failed that, okay. uh, Ted, what would have been the penalties on your business? Um, right now, I, I don't know. They would have written us up. Um, it's not there, unsubstantial. I mean, no, it's something. No, it's, not, it's something, yes. Right. Yes. And there are, okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Good. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Tyler Hatton. Hello, Tyler. Thank you for coming. Good evening. I just heard about this meeting a couple hours ago, so I didn't get a chance to prepare some kind of eloquent speech, but I'm just really curious what a ban on flavoring is really trying to achieve. I mean, is that going to stop kids from trying it, or is this more of a parenting issue or maybe a, an education issue that needs to be put into the elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools? I mean, I can't tell you how many 50 and 60-year-olds come in I have an electrician, the only thing he wants is watermelon candy. He doesn't want tobacco. I'm sure you've all tried the cigarettes at some point. It tastes pretty awful. <laughs> you know, if I had the choice between eating kale or eating ice cream, going ice cream like every time. You know, I have a guy come in today, he's a 65-year-old uh, firefighter, and the only thing he wants is a chocolate-flavored cake or an Oreo milkshake. And so I'm just really concerned when um, – like, how far are we going to reach into people's freedom of choice that we're just going to start banning things because certain parents can't get a hold of their children and teach them properly? You know? um, we've been doing this five years, and our tobacco sales are probably less than 1% of any flavoring that we sell just because no one wants it. It tastes like dirt. Um, I had a whole string. I'm trying not to vent and rant on this subject. This is really frustrating. I mean, they took the smoking age of 18 and they changed it to 21 when 18 is the age to vote. And no 18-year-olds have the option to vote on this. It's just the state of California just went, boom, here it is. And it's just like, <laughs> it's kind of a sick reach in taking away personal freedom. Um, kind of disgusted by it. I think underage drinking is a huge thing. And they're not banning absolute cotton candy flavored vodka. And, you know, it's just... It's watermelon vodka. No one's telling 
sorry, ma'am, we can't serve you this apple martini. Would you like a beer instead? And, you know, you're not, it's like the nicotine buzz is so close to a caffeine buzz, but we're not saying, sorry, we can't sell you this caramel macchiato. You can only have black coffee. It was, you know, it's just a huge reach. And as far as nicotine dealing death, I think when you separate nicotine from the tobacco plant that people are then lighting into their face and lungs, it's a totally different substance. It's not carcinogenic. I don't see it killing people. And unfortunately, they won't know for 30, 40 years, right? They said it was dealing death. So it's so close in chemical composition to caffeine. It's a very mild stimulant. And, uh, obviously, I'm a little biased, but, you know, just I'm sick of freedom of choice being stepped on just because people can't get their kids under control. I guess I'll do it for me. You spoke well. Thank you, Thanks. sir. Lisa Bellini. Hello, Lisa. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor Clarkson and San Ramon Council members. My name is Lisa Bellini. I'm speaking tonight as a San Ramon resident of 27 years a volunteer for the American Heart Association and a parent. I'm happy to see the council is taking action to restrict the sale of flavored tobacco. I'm sickened by the tobacco industry's attempt to addict a new generation of youth. Flavors like bubblegum, Sour Patch Kids, gummy bears, come on, right? This is to entice the youth and to mask the harsh taste of tobacco. I'm sure this bothers you too. My kids went through San Ramon Unified School District till, from kindergarten till 12th grade, and we were extremely happy here. But you know what? They are, were not affected by this new wave of addiction because of their age, just by a few years. And I'm grateful I never had to compete with the aggressive marketing environment. I believe the strict flavored tobacco restrictions are necessary to protect our children from a lifetime of tobacco-related disease and premature death. The proposed 500-foot buffer zone, while an important strategy, may ultimately fall short of the goal of keeping these products out of the hands of our kids. Our kids don't exist in a bubble around schools or parks. Don't they deserve to be protected throughout the entire city? The American Heart Association commends you for putting the health of our kids above tobacco industry profits. As a mother, I respectfully ask the council to end flavored tobacco sales citywide. Thank you. Thank you. Jaime Rojas. Hello, am I right? Hello. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, fellow council members. My name is Jaime Rojas with the National Association of Tobacco Outlets. Uh, we represent over 80,000 retailers throughout the United States, including some of your 40-plus retailers here in the city of Raf uh, San Ramon. As many of you already heard, and I won't uh, repeat, uh, keep going on this, is how this um, page two, including the flavor ban, was included without the outreach, as many cities done throughout, uh, as a presentation the city attorney has done, has done uh, throughout the areas, most recently Richmond, who actually sat down with the, with the retailers and done a workshop to get their input and impact, both positive and negative. I'll reiterate as well, it's, it's already been two years since the age of 21 and over to sell to anyone younger. It's illegal to do that already. Products are sold behind uh, by law on the federal level, which is, as well as the state, behind the counter. Most of these products, 15,000 of them, very few come into the retailer's hands to begin with. And even according to the uh, state health department, most of the youth that are getting these products are from basically two sources, family and friends, who buy it for them on their behalf, and online internet sales, which is growing tremendously uh, year by year. 
we're asking as part of our association, many of the retailers, for you to take a look back, remove this uh, segment from the ordinance, review it, and get the impact from your retailers. They pay their taxes, they pay and, and employ many of the people here uh, within their communities, and more importantly, it is already illegal to sell for anyone under 21 years of age. Uh, the code enforcement here and the sting operations have passed within the past two years have been over 97% passing rate within your retailers here in the city of San Ramon. So I ask you to first, if you can review this, sit back, speak with the retailers, find out which ones are being impacted. I would look in reviewing for you to consider city of uh, uh, Hayward who passed an ordinance to also grandfather the current retailers who are following the rules and regulations currently within the state and federal level. We're also looking at city of Berkeley who did a distance and, um, uh, and density ordinance as well. It took them five years of input from both the community, retailers, and other stakeholders throughout the community, and not just an overnight ordinance stuck in on page two, uh, similar to what we see tonight. So I'm asking you to please consider this, talk to your retailers, have a sit down at a table and find a consideration, but it's already illegal to market according to the master agreement of 25 years ago to market to youth to put it on billboards, to put it on magazines, limited advertising on stores. Most of this, as confirmed by, uh, by the state, most of it is done by internet sales and adults who buy for them on their behalf and give it to them. So with that, we ask from, on behalf of NATO, reconsider this, uh, this uh, segment of the ordinance, push back and allow the retailer to sit down on, on the table and to find a solution for this, for this situation. Thank you. So you can purchase these products on the internet? Oh, absolutely, yes. If you look on to um, State of California Health Department, uh, seven, uh, they give five to seven uh, main reasons why, where youth are getting to the back of products, Re twice a repeat uh, on sales. Uh, many times you see uh, uh, companies like Post-it that sell these products online, don't check IDs. Retailers, many of them, you see them, uh, Chevron gas stations, 7-Elevens, have internal, and most of these small mom and pop, and, and as you heard, some of the retailer owners who are here testifying actually check by law IDs, verify them, because the last thing they want to do is lose their business. The last thing they want to do is also they represent the community, and the last thing they want to do is sell something that's that to an underage person. Great. Thank you, sir. Mr. Council, I, I asked the question earlier, and you may know this given your um, area of expertise. What is the fine for a business owner then? Uh, the young uh, woman came up and she owns a shop here. What would have been the fine if they would have been found guilty? It varies depending if you, if you ha if the city has a municipality uh, tobacco retail license uh, uh, ordinance. It varies from a uh, a fee, a fine of somewhere between two hundred two hundred fifty dollars to a thousand dollars on the first time, second time higher, and also closure of the business from fifteen to thirty days, third time um, uh, closure of a business for six months. 7-Eleven, for example, after the second time they're hit, their business has to be sold immediately. So depending on a franchisee, depending on an independent owner and what they do, most of the restrictions are even harder than what the municipalities do. So, a muni so if I'm hearing you correctly, and I'd like some affirmation of this from our legal counsel, are you saying that a municipality can actually set <laughs> fine? Oh, absolutely, yeah. The, sta the state of California has uh, a rate, uh, and cities can go with that minimum rate or increase it, depending on a first offense, a second offense, and third offense is usually uh, a, a, a long closure of 60 days or longer, which basically uh, kills the business overall. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, for, for Harry's um, benefit, a couple of years ago, I tried to get a tobacco retail license program implemented in the city which would have included fines such as what he mentioned uh, revocation of license on second offense or suspension of, of retail license on second offense and things like that but I couldn't get council support for that. Council members can add also as well both not only the state but the FDA also conducts these thing operations on an annual basis so there your businesses and retailers here in the city of San Ramon get hit twice to make sure that they are compliant with both the state and federal law. Um, and the American Heart Association, the American Lung Association give, uh, I think in the past uh, two years, an A minus to an A on health issues here pertaining to the city. So you've done your job to what needs to be done. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Jen Grand Lahano.
Hello, Jen. Thank you for coming. Hello. Thank you. Um, my name is Jen Granlahano from the Contra Costa County Tobacco Prevention Program. Um, so thank you, Councilmember Perkins, for being at that mayor's conference. I was the one that gave that presentation. Um, so, and I, I emailed the council earlier with um, some more information um, and resources to consider for this item. So I hope that, um, that you got that. Um, I'd like to thank you for considering these amendments to protect youth and others from tobacco influences and secondhand smoke in San Ramon. Um, as you may know, tobacco, is, um, tobacco use continues to be the leading cause of preventable death in California and in the nation. Um, and 90% of smokers start before the age of 18, making this um, very much a pediatric issue. And um, when talking about nicotine, which is more addictive than heroin, um, this is not an issue of freedom of, cho of choice. So um, currently you're proposing to restrict the sale of flavored tobacco products only within 500 feet of youth areas. Um, and thank you for taking steps to restrict the sale of these dangerous products. Um, this is an area that's changing quickly in tobacco policy, and now the best practice is to prohibit the sale of flavored tobacco products, including menthol cigarettes, um, citywide. And the county recently implemented a policy that only restricted flavored products around youth areas. Um, and beside, and I can speak to that since I was the main staff person doing that implementation. So besides taking a lot of staff time for GIS mapping um, to find out which stores were in these buffer zones, we also heard from retailers that these buffer zones created an un um, unfair playing field because not all retailers were equally impacted by the law. Um, it was confusing for customers and result in only partial protections from um, exposure to tobacco advertising for youth that travel much farther than a block from school. Um, and the city of Richmond just adopted a policy restricting flavored tobacco citywide and Oakland, San Francisco, Santa Clara, and San Mateo counties have similar um, jurisdiction-wide policies. And I'm happy to provide more information about how different local cities have tackled this issue so that San Ramon can find an option that works best for the city. Um, also, the California Department of Justice has grant money through Prop um, Proposition 56, which is the state tobacco tax. Um, this grant money is available to local law enforcement, schools, and city attorney's offices to enforce local tobacco control laws. Now, this money cannot be used to supplant a tobacco retail license fee, but is intended to help shape adoption, implementation, and enforcement of new tobacco control laws, like the ones you're discussing tonight. Um, and the last round of proposals for this year will be due in August, so I'm happy to provide some information to the city about that. Um, as well as share my experience and lessons learned from recent implementation of our county's tobacco sales laws. And again, thank you for considering options to protect those who live, work, and play in San Ramon um, from the devastating public health concern that is tobacco. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Jesse Platts. <coughs> Jesse? Hi, <clears throat> my name is Jesse Plouts. I'm a, a business consultant for vape shops with vapemanners.com. We've been working with vape shops for five years, and we are currently um, helping vape shops be FDA compliant and state and local compliant with their uh, local laws. This is concerning to us for a lot of reasons, um, mostly because of the business impact, but I want to cite a couple of important things that I noticed, especially in the um, in the <clears throat> ordinance that uh, I found to be insincere. Um, so I was pleased to see that, that, that you guys were referencing some science. Um, however, there was a lot of key science that was suspiciously omitted, and I think it's unfair to be making policies based on a, not, a not unfair sampling of the science out there. Um, <clears throat> I want to make the case today that new, the new ordinance is based on an unfair selection of science related to the public health effects of vaping and of the flavor ban. I also want to point out that some of the important claims about vaping were made without proper reference to a credible scientific article. I'm referring only to the um, ordinance that I read in the back. I've not seen the presentation by her. I, we, I would like that to be available if we can see that so that we can comment on the references and the sources. I also want to start off by addressing two important things that came up while I was listening to uh, the public comment. First, <clears throat> um, I see no proof that prohibition works. <clears throat> I don't think you can find a good example that prohibition works. And um, I am confident that if you prohibit flavored tobacco, uh, meaning vaping products, the impact will be insignificant. They will still be, uh, there will still be access to it, not to mention you can make these uh, liquids in your house. 
You can buy all those products. You can buy all the recipes. You can buy everything you need to just make it yourself. People are doing that right now. Prohibition will not help, and it will only hurt business. Uh, second, I want to comment on a, a comment that uh, Scott made about um, having no <clears throat> empathy for products that deal in addiction and death. I think that's an unfair claim to put on vaping because there's actually plenty of science to argue that there is no health risk to vaping. Um, if you're going to correlate tobacco studies with vaping, that's an unfair correlation. <clears throat> They're completely unrelated. And if you're going to argue that nicotine by itself is dangerous, we know that that's not true because Nicoderm CQ, we know that uh, the, the, the gum, nicotine gum, no, my mom's been chewing it for 20 years. She doesn't have mouth cancer. <clears throat> okay, so the lack of science. On page 234, you make the claim that preliminary indications are that secondhand vaping may also be harmful to the health of non-smokers, but nothing is referenced. I can provide you a list of peer-reviewed studies that say that vaping is, uh, smoke is, vaping is not <clears throat> harmful. You also claim on page 236 that numerous studies have found, that's your quote, numerous studies have found that second, <clears throat> that secondhand smoke from vaping and smoking is a public health hazard, but that is also not referenced. How can we know that you have fairly represented the studies that found vaping to be not harmful or insignificant? The vaping community agrees that secondhand smoke from a combustible cigarettes is dangerous and should be reduced to public spaces. We are also sensitive to the fact that vaping in public can be undesirable even if it is not dangerous but it's concerning to us that the reasoning behind the decision is not based on fair sampling of the science. I see, I see no scientific articles referenced in your municipal code that give us reason to believe secondhand smoke from vaping is dangerous and is concerning that, that no more cited. I urge you to consider the study published by Biomed Central titled Peering into the Mist Scientific Review What the Chemistry of Contaminants in Electronic Cigarettes Tells Us About the Health Risks, authored by Dr. Igor Burstein of Drexel University. I'll read this and I'll continue. Um, <clears throat> current state of knowledge about the chemistry of liquids and aerosols associated with electronic cigarettes indicates that there is no evidence that vaping produces inhalable exposure to contaminants of the aerosol that would warrant health concerns by the standards that are used to ensure safety of workplaces. Exposures of bystanders are likely to be orders of magnitude less and thus pose no apparent concern. Sir, can you? You're a minute over. Yeah. Okay, Probably. let me just uh, end by saying that two more things. Um, youth smoking rates, the numbers don't make sense. You say that, uh, that a youth who vapes is four times more likely to smoke, yet youth smoking rates have gone down significantly uh, continuously since 2017 and from their peak in 1997. So that doesn't make sense. <clears throat> and then I also want to um, just point out that this claim that big tobacco is somehow behind the vaping industry is just a fabrication. That's a lie. They are absolutely not involved with the vape industry at all. And uh, to accuse... Um, small business owners of being somehow puppets of big tobacco to addict youth is, is a lie. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your comments. Thank you. Jose Ramos. Hello, Jose. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members, gentlemen. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to address you tonight. Um, I'm a constituent. I uh, live here in San Ramon. I'm also the former chair of the Board of Directors of the American Cancer Society here in California, as well as a volunteer with American Cancer Society. Cancer Action Network, which is the cancer policy affiliate of the ACS. Um, gentlemen, I want to urge you to uh, send this back to your staff and enact a complete ban on the sale of flavored tobacco products uh, here in the city. Uh, youth smoking and youth uh, use of tobacco remains a, a huge problem. We have nine million youth in California, about a million and a half of them will become smokers. Half a million of those kids uh, will die a premature death because of tobacco products. Um, just this last April, the FDA released a study that showed in the last 30 days, now this is current, this is only a few months ago, um, that 1.7 million high schoolers had used an e-cigarette in the last 30 days. 500,000 middle schoolers had used an e-cigarette in the last 30 days. Uh, make no mistake about it, these products were engineered for a target market by the tobacco industry. You're all probably familiar with the, uh, with the menthol uh, cigarettes targeting the African-American community. Just Google it, you'll find all the internal documents and, and you know, the, the industry continued to deny that they were doing this and, and it was very, became very clear that they had a target market, a profit opportunity and developed a product, <clears throat> excuse me, to exploit it. They're doing the same thing with our kids. Flavors like Candy Crush, Hello Kitty, who do you think that's targeted to? All right, it's not adults, like, let's be serious, okay? Um, our kids are being targeted because they are the next generation of smokers. When 95% of adult smokers start before 21, what do the companies have to do? If you're gonna protect your profit stream, 
You got to go after them, develop them early so they can become a lifelong series of cash flows for your organization. Uh, gentlemen, you have a chance to lead here. Oh, a few communities have gotten out in front, San Francisco, Richmond, Yellow County. Uh, in San Francisco, in the case, uh, I think, enacted it based on the Board of Supervisors' recommendation. The tobacco companies got it on the ballot to uh, try and fight it, spent $12 million to fight it, and 70% of the residents of San Francisco said having these products in our community was a bad idea. Uh, you have the chance to lead here as well. I think um, the notion that we shouldn't do anything uh, because you can get on the internet or make it in your house is ludicrous to me. Uh, you folks can do something. You can do something here to protect your residents. You can't control everything. Uh, granted, but Mayor, just a minute ago, you said your greatest commitment as a body was to public safety. Now, in that context, you were referring to physical safety. Clearly, it's a responsibility. I'm a parent. It's my job to protect my kids. But you as a governing body have decided that you will do what you can where possible to add a layer of protection onto your community and to your residents. I'd ask you to adopt the same mindset when it comes to this. Um, the notion that we should wait 30 to 40 years, I think the other gentleman talked about it, took that long to figure it out. No one thought smoking killed people until the lung cancer cases started to rise and so did the deaths. And now tobacco products are responsible for about three out of five cancer deaths worldwide. Uh, so gentlemen, I'd ask you to make a commitment here, make a commitment to your residents. If you need data, I can get all the data you need to back up or to be an input in your decision-making process, and I'd be happy to do it. Um, I thank you again for considering the ordinance. I think it needs to have more teeth. Uh, 500 feet is not going to do it. That's the distance from where you're sitting to the farthest space in the parking lot. It's not very far. Um, let's do what we can to protect these kids, protect youth, do something here in your community. I urge you to do it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> That's it. Okay. I'll close the public comment. And not to break, but I've got to go to the rest real quick. So you go ahead and start this fill right now, and I'll go right back. Could, uh, there were a set of options that were um, up there. Right I'll put, put these back there. Yeah, I just well, like put them up, up on the board for, for everybody. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, the, the one before that. Personally, think we ought to go with. I think we ought to do number two. Get to the policy, policy committee. Well, get input from the from the community. Um, uh, there were actually some interesting arguments on both sides of this. I I do get. Um, um, uh, I don't quite know where the term best. I, I know where the term best practice comes from in 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 healthcare, because it's. You're, you're testing out a bunch of different systems. What best practice in this instance means is ban it, I, I presume. So um, ban it bit, of, bit of overuse of the term, but um, nonetheless, um, I think that's, I think, you know, there's some, there's some input here on both sides, and I, I'd like to see the, pol I mean, the policy committee dealt with a lot of tobacco well, issues I, in the past. I, I would like to see that we implement, at, at a minimum, we set the hearing for the first two elements of it so that the smoking ordinance is updated to include marijuana smoke and vaping in public places. The issue of sale, uh, refer it to the policy committee. Yeah, and, and my problem is I, I have... Um, I've been trying I, for a year to well, try I, 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 you, you could try for 20 years, Scott, uh, um, and I'll still talk. Yeah. What I... I firmly understand the notion of secondhand smoke. <clears throat> I get that. Mm -hmm. And even Ireland ba um, banned smoking in pubs, which was a, a, a phenomenal, <laughs> they adopted the best practice, right? But um, I'm a little more skeptical of secondhand vape smoke. I, I, and I would like to see the evidence of that. It's, uh, and, and there ver may very well be evidence of it, but I haven't seen any. And, 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 um, and somebody goes by me in the park and blows out some vape smoke, my, 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 some vapor, my response to that is, well, that guy's addicted to nicotine, that's his problem. Um, but well, it's, and, 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 and the, and the, so uh, nicotine and caffeine are not the same thing. Nicotine's a drug that actually can, it can hype you up if you need to be hyped up, it can calm you down. If you need to be calmed down, caffeine does not do that. So nicotine is an it is a different. It's a very unusual drug. But um, uh, I want to do this.
from the standpoint of science because i just think that's the appropriate way of dealing with this and the science i'm saying may very well prove that what what mr ramos was saying is is all is is it is a proper approach i'm not saying either side's correct at this point i want to get some more input that's why i'm saying i'd like to have the policy committee get some more input from the public so uh and, and the public being some more experts i mean this isn't the first time that there's been cherry picked um evidence that um we've ended up using in a regulation and and it bothered me uh, other times and i don't like when that's done i'm the son of a scientist and um he'd be turning over in his grave right now even though he hated smoking about stuff like this we just got to do this in a proper fashion and um and the proper fashion to me is analyze it uh, does that mean that um that uh, i think vaping's a great idea absolutely not uh, do i think it it um it likely leads younger kids to get into nicotine probably but i'd like to uh, um you know i don't see why vaping in a park is a problem uh, uh, until somebody shows me the evidence that it is. Otherwise, it's just, is it rude to blow vape smoke in my face? Yeah, but people don't do that to me. It said, uh, um, you know, I mean, plant products, come on. Uh, that's why I made the comment about beef jerky. It's like, we're getting a little, <laughs> we're getting a little nanny state-ish about some of this stuff. I mean, if, what, if somebody uh, got, a, got some wheat and decided to smoke it, uh, the cops are gonna, um, I'm going to issue them a citation. It's just kind of, it gets just a little odd in that regard. And does that make me judgmental? Probably. But I just think it's kind of weird. And maybe weird's the wrong term to be using up here. But that's where I'm coming from on this. It's, it's like, let's get some more input. Let's get, there's, there's passion and science probably on both sides of this. And let's hear it from that standpoint. I think this is a good discussion. Yeah. You're ahead of me, Scott. Go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, I think you nailed it, really. I was thinking the whole time, that because I was watching this before Martin brought up, you know, we ought to get back to policy and let some people talk. The letter probably influenced me more uh, when I said, you know, nobody told us about this. It just came up. Um, it is always the first statement, no, ban it. Uh, I was this close to seconding that motion if you'd said 500 feet, but at 1,000, they're out of business from Dick Pay Park. And that really has to be analyzed. Who are we putting out of business? We did a, the smoking ordinance when the teens came up with it. And if we had uh, uh, done the original recommendation, uh, there would be no smoking at San Ramon Golf. I don't know of anybody over there that doesn't smoke. <laughs> Everything, uh, except me. But the, the reality is exactly what Phil was just saying. If they blow some uh, vape in your face, there's, there's some degree of <coughs> harm. And then you turn around and you're barbecuing in the park and I'm getting ready to give you a council report at the end of our meeting telling you how bad particulate matter is. Number one cause of health effects in the air, number two cause of climate change in the Bay Area. So I mean, where do we draw the line on banning? And to me, to do it in one night when I just read this thing and it's just not good policy. I want to know what we're doing when we do this ordinance more than anything else because how many times do we hear about it afterwards? And, but personally, I mean, you know, I, I'm ready to go with what Scott says, but it's hypocritical. I don't use the products either. Uh, and they're legal and I, I'm hearing that they don't sell these to kids, but it's all, the other side was all about kids. So somehow, some way they're getting it because I know they're getting the other stuff too, just like they were getting fireworks on the 4th of July. But uh, I don't think this thing's gonna go away. I think, uh, uh, I mean, I would very much invite the same people that were here to come back and show us some stuff, but I don't wanna kick this down the road. I wanna do it right the first time, which means I just stuck the mayor and I with the the problem initially, but I, I don't mind it. In fact, if we have to rent this, let's let's do it again. We did it with cigarettes. Uh, I don't think we're going to ban cigarettes. I think that one's a little, I'd like to do that too. But, I mean, we have to take a look at everything on this. I, I'm ready to push it to policy also. Scott, um, I'd like to point out that 
you say a guy walking past you vaping may, may, not, may be just an annoyance. Unfortunately, one of the buildings I work in, there's a guy who vapes right outside our door because vaping right outside your door isn't illegal. Smoking outside our door is, but it is the most obnoxious smell. And he, and he says, you can't do anything about it. He's actually told me that he, I can't do anything about it because it's not included in our smoking ordinance. And it is a very obnoxious smell. And so that, that is why I would like to see the vaping included because the, and there's going to be people that vape, and they're very courteous people, and there's going to be people who vape and are absolutely obnoxious. And unfortunately, many, many laws are created. We saw this with the uh, Safe Routes to School tonight. You know, the people that park in the crosswalk are, are the reason we have to have enforcement. They, they, can't, they can't bring themselves to, to be good, conscientious, thoughtful people. And there are people who vape in a way that is not courteous. And so they will vape right outside the door of the office. And it is an obnoxious smell. And that's why I asked that we include vaping in our smoking ordinance. Maybe and you suggest, maybe you should suggest he, he get a chocolate flavored one. Maybe <laughs> there we go. Just gonna go here. <laughs> or, or maybe he get bubble gum. <laughs> Or something sweet smelling. I shouldn't make. But, but my, my but point I, is I get where that coming from, Scott. My, my point is I'm not trying to create a law that is directed at this one guy. I'm we we often that's what this body does. We often create laws or enact ordinances or direct staff to create no parking zones for and direct staff to do enforcement for people that can't bring themselves to be courteous otherwise. And so that's why I would like to see vaping included. Obviously, the marijuana smoke is, is another level of obnoxious smell that I don't think any, I hopefully nobody would disagree with that one. But bringing this to the policy committee, um, I'm fine with that. I, but I would like to see We won't it. drop it. I, I don't want to, I've been asking for this for more than a year. And it's finally, I mean, when, when Bob Sachs was the attorney, I asked Bob to, to work on this. And then we and heard he gave Martin, it to Mark. And, and he ran away. I mean, he retired rather than bringing this to Mark the council. Mark is too. <laughs> and, and, and Martin, um, you know, bless him, um, has brought this to the council, and uh, uh, I'm grateful that he has. And I would, I would like to see um, action on this, one way or the other. Quite, a, quite frankly, yeah. take a stand, folks, and take action on this. Dave okay, Perry. Um, Great points made by all sides. I do think this should go to the policy committee. At, at certain level, we're going to be asked to ban Every products that are legal at the federal level and the state level. And there are rules in place for a business that sells to minors to have penalties. Um, I've had, I mean, my father, my grandfather, and my, uh, I both passed away because of cigarette, uh, of lung cancer. Um, and my aunt is in bad shape. I love her tremendously, but she's a lifelong smoker. Even after the second, whatever they did, they, they don't stop. I get all that stuff. The vaping science a little bit different here. Be, it, it, it's, it's, for me, the issue of these are legal products. The honest should be on the Sacramento, the state of California, the state legislature, and the governor. Hey, you don't want these for the kids. If it's all about the children, then the state government would ban it in the state of California. But you got 435 cities, and you're going to go one by one saying, well, let's do this. And, and then let's figure out what businesses are doing this. That's on legal products. It's, that's a problem for me. I mean, that, that, where do you go? Alcohol. I mean, I'm a 52-year-old guy. I want to go, you know. You get to earn the right to do what you do, but as long as my rights end where other people's begin. I get this idea about secondhand smoke. I'd like to know what, what the science says about the vaping. Uh, because I don't want to rush uh, on this just because it sounds good. We're protecting children. I work with children all the time. Uh, some, you know, you can't do 100% of fail-safe legislative acts from any dais. We 
we got laws on the books right now that have been put in because folks from the American Cancer Society and all these advocacy groups went to the legislature when they allowed this stuff in the first place and said, here's how to spend the money, make sure some of it goes to uh, the education of the kids and, and all the programs in the schools. Well, I mean, at what level are you gonna stop people from doing anything uh, that might be injurious to themselves? Um, and the point about where they can get this stuff is very valid. You, you're gonna have negative impacts on business owners when most of these kids are picking this up um, and not, they're not walking directly into the store. So what's they're the point? They're not gonna do that. Yeah, they're not stupid. Um, to the extent, so we do, this needs to be hashed out a lot more um, because you're asking us to make illegal, legal products. I'm sorry to say that, so. Yeah, I, I, and obviously we're gonna talk about this some more. I, I think the nods are towards policy. Um, I will tell the, the two people that got up from, I'll just say from health, uh, American cancer and from lung, that, uh, um, or the other person that asked for a total ban, I, there are a lot worse things out there. Uh, and one of them I'm gonna pass out to you tonight. You, you think the state can't do something? One of the things I wanna pass out to you guys tonight is a pledge to be diesel free in 33 that the governor is going for. I'll never forget this. I read this off a brochure from Breathe. Two five pound logs burning in your fireplace are roughly the equivalent of 100 cigarettes. I mean, you can get it from a lot of other places. And for particulate I matter. And, well, particulate matter and probably 100 other carcinogens that are in there. And particulate matter is the number one cause of health effects in the air in the Bay Area. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the number one thing. The reality here is we're gonna have to weigh all this. We heard two or three things tonight about a ban and health. Tomorrow morning, I'll be asking for any information we've got on it to come to policy and bring it from the people at the Air District. If they don't have something on vaporing, I mean, it's gonna be a tough road for us to hoe that it, from the health issue. I think that the, one of the first things that we're gonna have to look at at policy is the 500, 1,000 and who we're affecting also. Because tonight what we heard is they're not selling to minors, they're not getting caught doing it, but the issue is minors. From what I heard tonight, that's a real issue. You start with the minors and they get older, et cetera, et cetera. But if the businesses aren't the ones doing it, but they're getting the blame for it, we're gonna have to weigh that too. Everything's on the table. So to me, we start with the first meeting, Mayor. If we can't get an answer in the first one, we come right back probably in the same month and do it. I don't wanna kick this down the road because Scott's right. If, if a council member has asked for it twice now, we made the motion, then we should follow up. I'd like to, uh, I'd like to add on because uh, Scott, you said something about the, the fines. And I would like to see that looked at from policy because you do have the ability to set fines and if that can be um, used in place of, of banning something that has access for people who are of legal age, maybe you're looking at that. Okay. And I would like to see um, that. When, when Bob Sachs was our attorney, we, we actually had a proposal to establish what's called a tobacco retail license. And with the tobacco retail license, they, they applied for a license, they paid in the few hundreds of dollars for that license. And with that money, we, um, working with the police department, we did compliance we would, the way these things normally work, we would do compliance checks, okay? If a retail establishment was in violation of the retail, um, tobacco retail ordinance, they could be subject to fines. Um, on subsequent violations, they could be subject to like a 30-day suspension of sale of tobacco products, and the, the penalties rose from there. Um, but um, it didn't get a second, and so it died um, right here on the dance. Okay, uh, there's, there are, um, there's a bifurcation going on here, which is we have one idea, which is the policy about treating, treating tobacco, vaping, and marijuana in terms of restricting where it can be done in the city in different places, and that's one discussion. 
The second discussion we're having is whether or not we want to take action to restrict the sale of vaping. And it sounds like the sale of or vaping products. And the sale Colored. of flavored products. Flavored. Thank you, flavored. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. So I think both are going to go back. Both are going to go back to policy. Mm -hmm. um, we'll address them. Was there really two different issues, but they yeah. can be tied let's, together? Let's bifurcate them. Just and um, I, I appreciate your leave, and I walked back in about focusing on the science. Appreciate that. Those comments. There is a predisposition, especially on my part, to be honest with you, is to restrict as much as we can this these products from falling into the hands of young people, and I'd rather. Uh, fall on the side of being too careful than not. I'm just sharing it through. That's just my pre predisposition. I think as adults across the way, we have a duty and responsibility to make sure that we restrict access in every shape, way, or form these products because they are they're products that when you become an adult, you want to go down that route, that's your choice. But when you're below that, and the statistics that we're getting, the statistics, I'm not sure what the health benefits, the statistics are that this product is out there and it's being used by young adults, not through stores it appears, but it is being used. So it's going to be referred to policy. I'll let staff to carry the ball in terms of how we approach that and make sure we have good outreach and we get good information in and some good science, as Phil would say, and have a thoughtful discussion. I appreciate everybody who came here tonight and who shared their passion and their interest in this because it makes for a much richer conversation. And not seeing anything else, we will move on to the next item. Mr. Mayor, do we do we have a motion? Can we have a motion on no, that? No, we did not. It did not get seconded. Do, okay. Well, you you want a motion to refer this to the policy, policy yes, committee? Yes, we could do that. All right, all right I move that we refer the issue of the tobacco ordinance in all its parts to the policy committee for further action. Second. Touch yeah. your screen. All right, all right, all right. Screen, screen. Who's ever right. second? Second. Touch your screen. It's a 5-0 vote. Thank you. Item 12, city manager comments. I have no comments. You're supposed to all turn and look. Uh, and then get to this. Yeah, no comments. <laughs> Item 13, public comment. <laughs> Item 13, public comment. I have no further requests to speak. I'm looking around the room. I don't see somebody stepping up, so no. next item. Item 14, city council members and mayor's comments. We'll start on the left, my left. Okay. Um, attended the board meeting of the Marin Clean Energy. Things are moving along. Uh, we had a, um, let's see, I wrote it down. The, um, over the entire region during the enrollment period, the opt-out rate was about 9% uh, over the entire um, new um, participants. 9% so of the people are the accounts opted out. The high was in Oakley, was in Oakley at 17% and the low in Pittsburgh at 6%. Um, and that was probably the most, that was one of the most significant things. Uh, I need to report to the council that uh, I am planning to travel on August 21st, in full disclosure, to a wind farm and a solar farm down in the Mojave Lancaster area for MCE. Um, MCE will pay or reimburse all the costs. The city will incur no cost. The, um, the Mojave um, wind farm is one of the largest, it's in the Tehachapi range down there. It's one of the largest wind farms around. And the area called the Antelope um, Solar Farm is one of the largest solar farms in the world. And we're buying power. When we buy power from these guys, we buy it at, a, at 100 to 150 megawatts at a time. Uh, these are really big contracts. And so they've invited us to come down and tour their facilities. And MCE is going to be covering the costs. So full disclosure, um, I would like um, staff to report back to council either through the weekly or some other method on the donation box. Um, we adjusted our ordinance related to donation boxes and uh, um, staff was, uh, code compliance was going to go out and survey the city for um, donation boxes. I'd like to know how many are 
licensed or, and in compliance and their locations? Did they pay their, their fees and all? And how many um, did we have that have been removed because they chose not to participate? These are the big boxes that people Yeah, the big about. boxes, and, and they're almost all for profit. They are not uh, a, a not-for-profit. They put them in a parking lot. Um, usually, you know, a great big box. They're collecting shoes or clothes or, or books or things. And, the audience. and so I'd just like to know the results of how many and where the ones that are in compliance and how many and where have been removed because they chose not to participate. And because um, uh, we passed that back in, I was, believe it was March, April time frame. And so I believe the implementation period is about over. If, it's, if the implementation period is not over yet, just prepare the report when the implementation period is complete. Thank you. Okay, I get a couple things to pass out if I can from the Air District. Um, the first one is uh, this accounts for report. Pretty much what we were talking about, but what particular matter does and why we are focused on at the uh, at the Air District. Uh, it doesn't take much to. I'll just read this one part. Major improvement since 2005, but air cost is about the biggest matter. Cancer risk still averages nearly 700 in a million throughout the Bay Area in 2014, but may be as high as three to four times that in most impacted communities. Because of that, Christine Garcia passed a bill about improving air quality in neighborhoods, AB 617, and the issue that we should be concerned about, and I'll leave it up in, in the office to anybody who wants to read it, is it's really about impacted areas. So we've got till October 1st of 2018 to identify uh, what we consider impacted areas. The first one is going to be West Oakland, uh, two Richmond. If I were them, I wouldn't be worried about vaping. I'd be more worried about the other problems they have over there. And we're going to be doing a lot of monitoring because of the uh, refinery. And then two through five, it talks about four or five other cities in the Bay Area. Obviously, uh, Scott Hagrid and I started saying, what about us? Because of the diesel particular matter in trucks. Which brings us to the next one, which is a statement of purpose. Uh, the governor wants every elected official, everybody anywhere. Yeah, you can't hear me? Is Bruce complaining again? I'm not going to start over, Bruce. Uh, it, it is an intention of this statement of purpose to establish a goal to reduce diesel emission in local communities. He wants to be... Diesel free in 33, there's going to be a, uh, you can all sign on to this. It's a pledge. You can read it for yourself. Uh, a lot of people already have. I have. Uh, there will be a meeting in San Francisco uh, where the Air District Metro building is built in there uh, at Moscone Center. They're expecting about 12,000 people. Uh, and people will be given the opportunity of why they're behind it. Uh, again, I can't stress it enough. Number one cause, health effects in the air. Number two cause of climate change is particulate matter, black carbon in particular. Third, last, CCTA has agreed to take a look at doing uh, another uh, expenditure plan to see if we can come back with Measure Action 2020. Um, we still think that the things that people told us they wanted are still there. Um, a big program or project will be uh, Innovate 680. Uh, it takes a lot of money. You're, you, it'll be more than just the tollings you've seen, though. They will be completed through Walnut Creek, hopefully, uh, before uh, money would be used from, we'll call it, Son of X. So it's, a, it's still got a, a pretty, pretty busy through the end of the year. Um, also, what I didn't vote on tonight, in August, uh, we're getting so much uh, opinions about the tar sands and the uh, travel through cities and uh, it's more flammable, whatever, uh, that many of us on the ad hoc refinery committee and uh, stationary source are going up to Canada to the tar sands up around the Arctic Circle. So I'll bring my boots and bring my gloves and try not to freeze. But uh, no, it, no, you need it's going to be a Mosquito eventful. repellent. Uh, mosquito yeah. repellent yeah, David, for particular true. matter. You take weights for your ankles so they don't carry you off. Mm -hmm. That big. No. A couple of items. Uh, one, I'd like to uh, um, thank the city manager for 
Again, the signs put up informing the, the public in San Ramon about the uses of SB1 money um, yeah. quite immediately and, and more impactful, I think, than other communities where I've seen uh, much more um, oh, by the way signs rather than, um, hey, folks, this is, this is real and this is how we're spending the money. So thank you for, for doing that, um, Joe, because I think it's important for in terms of public education on, on SB1. That's um, one item. Um, secondly, uh, the Open Space Committee met on Monday and had a lot of good input to, um, to uh, Parks Director and to the Assistant City Manager about um, open spaces um, weaving with parks, trails, and, uh, and such for, um, for the t next 10-year master plan. So I thought that was time very well spent. And finally, the Tri-Valley and San Joaquin Valley Regional Rail Authority is meeting tomorrow to um, probably adopt its uh, recommendations for um, further, for a, a direction in terms of um, where this is going. And um, it's supposed to be a, a long meeting. Um, and uh, they seem to be making some good progress. Lisa Babadia and I met with uh, the executive director and one of his engineers last week. So um, they've really uh, made a lot of headway and we'll see where this goes. Great. Um, just a couple of things to report, Mr. Mayor, uh, Library Foundation, we met with those good folks um, yesterday and they are just uh, moving along. Uh, coming up, I'll put this out here and hopefully we will hear more about this. Great, um, the Adventures in Jazz series. Here we go, Bruce, get that in the camera. Um, we've got the jazz program coming up here Saturday, September 29th, the first show. And then they come on the Saturdays, October, November, December. We want to encourage people. Um, great show uh, to look into at San Ramon Performing Arts.com. So the Adventures in Jazz series starting up. Traffics Board, uh, the Traffics Board met last week. Uh, new Administrative Coordinator Heidi Keston Lee, welcome mm -hmm. to the team. And um, Sam Ramon's the chair. We get the honor of that for the next two years. Yeah, so we've got a lot of things coming on there. And then finally, we had the presentation at the last city council <coughs> meeting on the water board. And uh, specifically, um, I think Brian mentioned that in September, the um, Tri-Valley Water Council is going to be uh, reconvening. And if you had any comments <coughs> regarding any of the information that was put out, you can either email them to me or to Brian. They're looking for the councils to come back with their input. We got some great uh, feedback um, at the presentation that was given by Zone 7 um, going forward with regards to the um, potable reuse reclamation project. So that is moving forward. And if you have any additional comments, thoughts, <coughs> let us know. Great. Um, No. The uh, hey, wait a second. Jesus. <laughs> no re I just <laughs> no respect. Uh, we've all talked about how safe our streets are. We've talked about how great schools we have, wonderful parks, um, an amazing place to live. And this last week, an article was written about a report that was put out that um, the case is made that the center of the economic universe is here in the Bay Area with Silicon Valley in particular, and the Silicon Valley being the incubator and of um, the greatest production of wealth the world has ever seen. And the article was interesting because they say when you drill down and look at where the jobs are actually being created, the leading area is the Tri-Valley. Yep. The Tri-Valley is creating more of these jobs anywhere else than even Silicon or even San Francisco. And so it's interesting that, uh, you know, that here we are perhaps in the center of the universe when it comes to um, this economy. So that's great news. Yes. Great place to live. Good yes. yes. Um, Madam Clerk. <laughs> you got that right. Item 15, closed session, 15.1. Do you have to read that, Madam Clerk? Yes. Convene to close session pursuant to government code section 54957.6 to meet with the city's labor negotiators, Joe Gordon, Martin License, Eric Figueroa, Eva Phelps, and Sarah Monastis concerning negotiations with the SEIU Local 1021. <laughs> 